Chapter 142 Susan pushed Derek into the room and carried in wide-eyed Dougie. Lyle and Matt closed the door. Susan's palms were sweating. Her heart threatened to pound out of her chest. Whatever was going on, she had the feeling it would be bad if the rest of the world saw it. Lyle stood motionless. Derek backed away in terror. Susan set Dougie down, slipped across the room, and dropped the shades. Good Lord, Susan hissed, looking down at the boys lying askew on the bed. Is he hurting them? I don't believe so, Carson said, stroking Mickey's hand. He wore a pale brown three-piece suit that almost perfectly matched his hair and eyes. Behind his thick glasses and pearly smile, Carson looked like a televangelist. Our son is with him, too, Alberta said. She touched Mickey's forehead with her finger. In addition to being an albino, it was apparent he carried a lot of his mother's genes. Her light blonde hair was done up with way too much hairspray. It glistened in the fluorescent light. Her pale blue eyes reflected a caring soul. We'd better not take the chance, Lyle barked. He lunged at Jeremy. No, Matt cried, knocking him onto the other bed. It felt like hitting a brick wall. Are you nuts, kid? Lyle asked. As he stood up, he held Matt out in front of him. What if he's killing them? He's not, Derek cried, tugging on Lyle's shirt. How do you know? Because I'm not, Jeremy replied, lowering to the bed. His eyes slowly returned to normal. Even though he's scared to death of me, Derek knows me better than that, Mr. Gibbons. Yeah, Lyle snapped, setting Matt down. Well, la-dee-da, Mr. Miracle. He pointed at Max and Ricardo. What are you doing to my godsons? Jeremy opened his mind to them. The glow returned to his eyes as he showed them exactly where Max, Ricardo, and the others were. Carson and Alberta began to pray. Lyle stumbled back. Sweet Mary, mother of God, he whispered, realizing what Jeremy needed to do. You'll never make it in time. I have to, Jeremy said. Will you help me? I will, Derek said. He sobbed as he gingerly reached out. Jeremy leaned forward and embraced him. I'm sorry, Jeremy, Derek whispered. I'm scared. My mom's and... I know, Derek, Jeremy replied. You're not alone, okay? I'll never let you be alone, I promise. I'll help too, Susan choked, tentatively stepping forward. Jesus, Jeremy, what happened to you? She swallowed hard. Are Sandy and Ian? She didn't have to finish the question. She could tell by the look in his eyes what the answer was. She swore she heard her heart break. Lyle snapped her back. Let's do this then, he exclaimed. You take care of your mom. She's a good lady. I want to go too, Dougie insisted. Derek looked at him like he was insane. Yeah, man, Matt nodded. Me too. What about me? Susan asked, suddenly very frightened. I want to help too, but I can't go in there. Fine, Jeremy replied. Come to ICU with me then. My mom's dying. Carson paused, looking sympathetic. We'll pray for you, son, he nodded. I owe Mickey, Jeremy said. Nonsense, Alberta replied. Mickey does the Lord's work. This is only the beginning, Jeremy. Her pleasant nature faded with a grim seriousness. There's a war on the horizon. We're here to help prepare you. Jeremy nodded and pointed to Craig's empty bed. I'd lay down if I were you, he said to the others. Once you're in, there won't be anything left behind to hold up your bodies.